How's it going guys? It's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today got something a little bit different. Uh, I've finally got around to editing like my fast lap that I did on the Isle of Man TT game. Uh, I did it probably not too far off a year ago really. I've been promising uh, Rebel by Choice for ages I was going to edit it and get it sorted. There's just many many reasons I never sort of got around to it and then I was thinking well shall I wait until the TT's back on in real life? Sort of a bit more uh, relevant than that. But yeah, I did a sub-16 minute lap, 15.57, which was the 79th fastest on the leaderboard at the time of filming. I could have been bumped down to 80, 82 or whatever by now. There's the green lines, the start of the TT now, there's the grandstand on the left, there's all the pits and that are on the left. And uh, yeah, like I say, the start of the TT, uh, school on the left, flying down here, already going pretty quick, 180, 190 maybe down here. Cut through Bray Hill. Bit of a Larry one. There's a good video on YouTube of the uh, rally driver Mark Higgins, I think it was. Went through there in a Subaru Impreza, obviously like a full on rally Subaru Impreza. Had a tank slapper there that, yeah, probably puckered him up a bit. He saved it pretty well. <laughs> Would have uh, been a bit of a hefty crash if he had not. Um, yeah, round quarter bridge. And yeah, for this video, it's one of them, like I say, there's sort of lots of reasons where, not that I like avoiding it or anything, um, but I was just thinking, as Joey Dunlop Foundation, by the way, in front, it's one of like, he died uh, in a different race, but yeah, a bit of a TT legend, a bit of a monster. The Dun uh, Dunlop family are uh, monsters, really, on the TT. Um, yeah, just quickly, I did actually blend this footage in. This was a different start of the lap. I blend it into my actual fast lap now. You can't even tell all the beginning of the laps are like within a hundredth of a second, basically the same. I just, no, I just couldn't save more than 15 minutes on my PlayStation. There's a fuel station on the left there, that's where my brother used to get his red diesel, <laughs> for farm use only of course. And a bungalow there on the left, there was some ridiculously good looking woman lived there back in the day. Not even on a pervy level, just when you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, should just be congratulated on having very good genes, <laughs> that's about it. Um, yeah, down here is Balagari this corner, but sort of nicknamed Balascari. Go through there, almost flat out, Guy Martin come off here, had a bit of a, he slid down the road. On the left blink and you almost see it, there's a wall there on the house, I built that wall. <laughs> Very proud of that, I mean, in a small way, I kind of helped build the Isle of Man. Although we did knock a stone wall down by accident in the 525. Which, to be fair, didn't, well, well, yeah, we did knock a wall down. But, it was a stone, an infamous Manx stone wall, you'd assume it was going to, like, just clip the corner of the car bumper off, if anything. Which, we didn't even need that corner of the car bumper. But it didn't, it, it didn't even put up any resistance either. It was only like doing a U-turn and it was just like, meh, we'll scuff the corner of the bumper instead of doing a three-point turn. And then the wall just fell over and it was like, really? <laughs> didn't even put up close to any fight. It barely even marked the car or anything. Um, yeah, so, I probably, I don't know, about even. I built a wall, I oversaw the destruction of the wall good times. Yeah, making this video <laughs> again now, it's one of them where at random points going around the lap, I'm like, oh, I've been there, done this, uh, yep, McDonald's down there, whatever. For other bits, it's kind of like, yeah, there's not really going to be much going on. Um, I do know, going along here, it's about to go around the corner, there's a pink house on the left, uh, and the wall there, I believe, that, like, there was a sidecar went around there. I don't know if my brother was there witnessing it live, or if he's seen it, like, that year on the TV or whatever, but apparently there's a sidecar that went round there, and as the driver must have then leaned back uh, as they straightened up, his helmet clipped the wall, and you just seen like a bit of dust sort of ping off the wall as it just clipped his helmet. Obviously, that's how close they're pushing it, kind of thing. Um, yeah, up into it's not the mountain section now. I don't really even know what this section's called. I'm not like an expert on all the names of the different uh, corners and everything. I know some of them for various different reasons. I do know along here somewhere on the right. I went to a mate's wedding reception, not there, where was it? Not planned, I just happened to be over in the Isle of Man at the time and we seen him and he's like, oh I'm getting married and I'm having a party, come down, so we did. <laughs> it, was one, it was a good night, just one of those, didn't even really plan it. Um, yeah, on the right there, you can't really see it, that was the car park, <laughs> good, good times. So yeah, there's certain bits that is like, I don't even know what Okay, now that might be that hill. Um, I wonder if it, like, it's random. It mostly, I said ages ago when I 
works over there for this guy. I won't say his name, because he just fucking trust me. <laughs> but we were going up a hill, and he was following a scaffolding truck. Yeah, that might actually be the hill. I didn't... I've lapped this hundreds of times. I never even thought about it, because it was snowy when it happened. But we were following a scaffolding truck up the hill, and there was like a 20, 30 foot scaffold pole jiggling on the back of the truck, sliding out from the ratchet straps, and it was sticking way further out the back of the truck than all the rest of the scaffold poles. And honestly, it, I, I promise you, it was like six inches away from my boss's windscreen, like some Final Destination shit. It was going to come out and just stab him like while he's driving, and yeah, he d did not care. It was like right next to the windscreen, and he just... He was a, a, yeah, a unique one, <laughs> to put it that way. Um, yeah, I think that actually might be the hill we were going up. Again, it, like when I was there, it was snowy at the time, so... I wouldn't have to actually uh, look back at that. But yeah, that's what I mean. Going around here, um, yeah, <laughs> random bits like that. I'd actually like to know myself. Um, kind of like, bits I recognise. Like I say, overall, it was just a quick lap in general, so... Uh, the lap I did was... 15.57. I think in real life they're getting nearer like 17 minutes, just over 17 minutes. Obviously it's one of those, that with a game you just, you can afford to just keep restart and restart and eventually you're going to put in some kind of like lap of the gods and it's just going to be a quicker time than, if they made the game to where you could only get as fast as the riders then most of the laps would feel pretty weak. Uh, back there funnily enough on the left you'll see it looked like a car park. It was actually a car garage and uh, as I said as well years ago we test drove a Subaru Impreza and that was where we got it from and it was around here somewhere when it started making a different noise and lost power I don't I mean it wasn't completely fucked because we drove it back and all the rest of it I think possibly like a turbo hose had come off or something but it yeah wasn't too healthy so if anyone did buy that Subaru afterwards then <laughs> my bad also, it was not a skyline, it must have been... I know it wasn't a skyline, I just remember it in my head. We also test drove another car there, and it must have been something like a 200SX or a 240SX or whatever the car, I can't even hardly remember. I'd, the Subaru was better though, quicker, well, until I started making some funny noises. Um, going, yeah, this is the bridge, I've seen, obviously you've got to get on your brakes there, I've seen someone go over that bridge and hit that pub. Which, yeah, because you get air off the bridge if you go too quick, you ain't making the corner. Uh, I think going down here, I mean, this is uh, what I mean, not that it sort of bothers me, but my dad died racing in this TT, so like inevitably this video is going to either become some kind of death tour lap, or I'm just going to not mention it, which is a bit elephant in the roomy. Here's Quarry Benz, this is where he died, so 185, I'll go around here, then clip that curb, slid, bang, bang, hit the... Uh, where those white bales were, but I think he hit the embankment, but yeah, clip the curb, bang bang, first bang being him hitting the mud, and sort of literally stopping dead, and then the bike hit him sort of straight afterwards, so double whammy, um, yeah, sounds pretty gruesome, but and when you think about it, you're racing along, having a good old time, and then bang, the lights go out, and you're done. Um, yeah, so, and that was, yeah, 19 years ago the other day, June the 5th, 2004, so... Soon flies by, it was 20 years ago on June the 4th, so that'd be 2003, I got punched in the face, <laughs> got metal plates in my cheek, good old times, 20 year old metal in my face, well I suppose not quite, I didn't have the operation that day. Um, yeah, there's a good bit after the quarry bends though, you got, uh, not Sylvie Straits, I can't remember what the bloody hell it's called now, I did until I've just gone blank, I don't know, there's some good straights though after the uh, quarry bends, which well, he didn't. It it was the last day of practice week, so he'd already lapped the TT, obviously. And they said he was going probably 160 to 180 through quarry bends, um, and obviously came off. Uh, yeah, abandoned the autopsy because they just said it was like soup. But again, that sounds bad, but it's kind of <laughs> it means it happened. Uh, it was all over pretty quickly. And yeah, it must have been the coroner guy because I know someone said it to me. They basically said it's pretty safe to say he was sort of going for the win that year, rather than just taking part, it was like he was trying to put in a bit of a last day of practice, obviously if you get the fastest lap I think you get to go first when the TT starts, so you've got no bikes that you're catching up at first and all sorts, so um, yeah, and then like I say, it was just one of them really with this video, where it's sort of, 
yeah, it was just naturally going to end up being like a random tour of odd, obscure things I know and this and that, and uh, yeah, whilst just doing a fast lap, really, kind of randomly rambling in the background. Um, obviously, I don't like doing snowrunner videos, I kind of know what I'm yapping on about in some of them with this. I don't even know myself how it's going to turn out, because, yeah, I'm just kind of yapping as I'm going along. I've not really, it's not all paced out on... It's one of them where, like, even though this is a quick lap, I could sit here and go, oh, yeah, then you break around this corner and now accelerate. It's just, I'm never going to... If you played the game, you'd get more of a feel for it yourself. There is obviously some sections where the game's telling you to break, but I keep it flawed a bit longer. You sort of figure that out. As you play the game, you just know you can carry a little bit more speed into a few corners that the game's kind of said to break a little bit earlier than you need to. Uh, yeah, around the hairpin there, going up to... Uh, now up into, like officially the mountains really. Uh, yeah, about 10 minutes going around that hairpin, so that's roughly what you want to be aiming for. And uh, yeah, it's flying up here, coming up to Gooseneck in a minute, which is like another hairpin really, did a, uh, which had a nice little, it was a, a nice drifting corner <laughs> to be honest, so quite a few times really been around there in a few different beamers we had and uh, yeah, now it's just one of them, because it's uphill as well, you, could, you you only need to be going like 5 or 10 mile an hour, it's just a nice sweepy drifting corner. Uh, well yeah, when you're coming out of Ramsey, well, I'm sure it will the other way, but I mainly know it like going this way, kind of the uh, correct way around the TT track, which yeah, I've never been around there on a bike or anything, I've been around here hundreds of times in a car, but not on like, on the TT on Mad Sunday or something, so uh, when I've been around going through the villages you stick to the speed limits but in the Isle of Man not just on TT like when you see the national speed limit sign which in the UK is like a white circle with like a diagonal black stripe through it um, over here that means you can go 60 mile an hour in the Isle of Man that means you can go as fast as you want so yeah just when I've been round here in like uh, the best thing I've been round here in was a 540 BMW E39 so it had a 4, four litre V8 with a 6 speed manual so that was a pretty nice one, and one of the times we went around in that, we actually got to follow uh, a Ferrari 599 GTO, which was pretty cool. When we originally got there, we were getting off the boat, there was the Ferrari 599 GTO and um, Lamborghini Murcielago that got off the boat, and it was not we got off in the morning and whatever, and a day or two later we seen him like at McDonald's, so basically Quarter Bridge, which is like the first 30 seconds of this lap, and... Um, yeah, started felt like he was doing a lap of the TT and we followed him and obviously it's a 599 GTO, pretty rare Ferrari really, so it was pretty cool. Um, but my brother was driving, he knew the track like the back of his hand. Um, this guy obviously didn't as well, so it was one of them where he had got a faster car but he's babying it a little bit more by comparison, whereas like we would just absolutely cane in the Beamer to keep up with this Ferrari and it, it worked out pretty nice, it was like having someone sort of like a pace car in front of you that's quicker but yeah he doesn't know it as well so by cutting the corners a little bit better and knowing how to break and drop the hammer and all that sort of kept up with him and it was a yeah good pretty quick lap and obviously in this like mountain sections he was dropping the hammer pretty pretty good uh, we were yeah in some sections he'd pull away a little bit and then again like corners he doesn't know as well we'd go flying through a bit better and it was a good lap, good time, like I say, I've been around hundreds of times, just not on a bike, I don't know, like, it's not to say I wouldn't do it on a bike, but I'm not sure if I'd make it out the other end, <laughs> it'd be too tempting, even in a car, sort of, when I had the M5, I'd love to have took the M5 over, but it's one of them where it's like, I'm not, if I'm taking the M5 over, I'm not going to tiptoe around the track, I'm gonna go for it so again it's like high stakes they want to be losing the m5 or anything and yeah this is a windy corner and then like I say my brother's dad died racing on the tt as well two years later um he was racing on the manx same track but just classic bike so it's like in august um yeah he had one leg so he had like a racing leg a walking leg a swimming leg you know like different legs like the swiss army leg or something and it was flapping and it was about there he went off off to the right and uh, funnily enough, it was William Dunlop, I believe is Joey Dunlop's nephew, like the, yeah, Joey Dunlop Foundation, like the legendary TT rider, who seen his, uh, and it was him who said, I think his leg was flapping, like it come become detached. Well, he had, it was below the knee, just below the knee, so he technically had one and a half legs, not one, but 
you know what I mean, probably do a pretty fucking good impression of a pirate, so you'd probably say he had one leg. Um, yeah, so it, it, like, it must have became detached, and then he was trying to like clip it back in, and I assume, anyway, this is what like was sort of guesstimated must have happened, and then yeah, as he probably just looked up a bit late or whatever, misjudged the corner, or just whatever, his leg flapping around, um, got wobbly leg, and then yeah, flew off there and uh, he died as well. Uh, yeah, just going down that straight, past the Craigna Bar pub, uh, another little straight here, just borrow the grass verge as we go around there. And then uh, coming up on the left, there's a little right, if you go down there and carry on down all the way, yeah. I went camping ages ago, it just, it randomly might, if I mention it in the future, <laughs> that's where it was down there. Uh, yeah, coming up here off the mountain, we may stay with him for a while, he lives just over that hedge on the right, you can just about see the roof of his house. Um, the helicopter, you can't really see it there, but the helicopter, when they fo follow the riders off the mountain, you could see his house, and it was funny, because one year we'd just seen a new car on his driver <laughs> ringing up, like, what do you got? Just seen you on the uh, TT, and yeah, he had an E36 328 Beamer. Pretty nice, rarer than the 325s. Um, yeah, so it was just, like, say, <laughs> just spying him, like, what do you got? Um, now, these roads, by the way, are normally... They've done different roads like that roundabout and blah blah blah. This was like the old TT track. They just they reopen these two little bits every year to you know like keep the authenticity of the track, but they don't actually get used by cars. So a lot of leaves are like quite slippy there. And then yeah, as I come out the final corner, I was pasting it to the finish. I was like, please get under 16. I kind of could tell about now. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna hit the green line 1557. I'm pretty bloody happy with myself now because I don't know how many hundreds of laps and yeah it's just one of them where you gotta let it all come together not one crash or anything. Um, so this was funny enough just like a minute or so after uh, a crash you could actually see I was going faster than my ghost there which would have been the fastest lap ghost so I could actually technically get a better time but again you could be 14 minutes in and you clip a curb and uh, you know start again so it takes a while um, and at that point I was like just cash it in because you can see there it says send in data if my game crashed or the electric cut or whatever, I would have lot like it wouldn't load that up to the leaderboard. So yeah, even though I was kind of like in the zone of it, it kind of would have been nice to carry on just doing laps. But um, yeah, like I say, just cashing it in. But there you go. Um, when I did it, yeah, 79th, 1557, 265. I was before that. It must have been 169th. <laughs> nice. Um, 1612, and then yeah, I got a better time like 1557. Uh, there's some of my sections here, section 1, blah blah blah. You can see though, section 2, it's still saying I'm like 3,000 something. For whatever reason, it won't refresh that section. I've done like 13 seconds quicker than what it's saying. Most of the other sections are all saving it, so I have 150 second there, etc. Um, there is one or two more that were like, it just says I'm 2,000th or whatever, and again, it just won't refresh it for some reason. Um, but yeah, like I say, overall pretty happy with that. 79th as of time of filming this, which was probably nine, ten months ago I got it, so I've probably been bumped down, I imagine, into like the 80s by now. Um, but yeah, again, I was like, top 100 was nice, just sub 16 I was pretty uh, damn happy with. I'll go over to the top 10, you can sort of see, like, to get in the top 10, 15.29. The top three times are like, either hats off to them. I don't, sometimes on the leaderboards, you know, it's like they've been slightly modded to get the best times, but if they're legit, then yeah, absolutely hats off to them. But yeah, that's about it, really. Like, it was just as quick as lap I did. Pretty happy with it. Now it's kind of the TT's on right now. People will be lapping this today. Yeah, I thought it was kind of relevant for a bit. I said to Rebel by Choice I'd get it done, so we finally got there. Um, yeah, the original Isle of Man game. And that's about it, though. Yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.